We bless the Lord for today's day of life. We praise the Lord of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor to the wonderful Lord. We give honor to the counselor of our salvation. We give honor to the mighty God, the everlasting God, the Prince of Peace, the one that keeps our mind in perfect peace. Oh, come on, people of God, and lift up your hands unto Zion and give our wonderful God a great big praise, a great big praise, a great big hand clap. That we salute the God of our salvation. We salute the God that gives us the gift to have eternal life. We lift up the name of Jesus on today. That's all we come to do is lift up the name of Jesus, praying and hoping that we will be refreshed that we will be revived, that we will be replenished within our souls. We lift up the name of Jesus on today. Come on, people of God. Come on, people of God. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise that we, that we believe that will reach heaven on today. We will make some noise that our God will come to his balcony and look amongst his people. Come on, people of God. Lift up his hands. Lift up your hands. Exalt our King. Exalt our King. We give God the glory on today. We give God the glory on today. We thank Jesus for saving our souls. We once was lost. We once was lost. But now we are found. Now we are found. Now we are found. Found by our Savior. Found by our Redeemer. Found, found, found. Oh, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. I can ask you to keep doing it, but I don't have to. It don't take much for me to think about the goodness of Jesus and where he brought me from and where he's taking me. Come on, people of God. 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 Some of you have been having a headache all day. Some of you have been dealing with pain. Some of you have been dealing with nasty people. Time is now to let that go and let God, and let God have his way. We bless you, God. We bless the God for shape. We bless the God of our salvation. We magnify him on today, people of God. We magnify him. I give honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm glad that I'm saved. Oh, shit. I'm glad that I'm saved. Saved. Oh, shit. I'm glad that I'm saved. Sanctified. Feel. 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 Somebody shall feel. Somebody shall feel. Feel with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. We will turn this over, part of the service, into our praise and worship leader, Elder Jerry Sapp. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, everybody. Come on, let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Come on, can we open up our mouth and give God praise, everybody? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give him glory, we give you glory. We give you glory, we give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be praised. And for that we glorify him. And for that we praise him. And for that we lift him up. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt this name together. Anybody come to exalt the Lord? Anybody come to exalt his name? For his name alone is excellent. How excellent is your name? 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 In all the earth, you're worthy to be praised, God. You're worthy to be praised, God. You're worthy to be praised, God. And for that, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Let's give the Lord Jesus a praise. Come on, give him praise, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 I need you to tell somebody, I don't know about you, but I come to lift up Jesus. Come on, tell us, I don't know what you come to do, 
but I come to lift up Jesus. I came to give him glory. I came to give him honor. Why I come to give him praise? Because he woke me up this morning. Why I come to give him praise? Because he woke me up this morning. Why I come to give him praise? Because he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He put food on my table, clothes on my back. If you don't have nothing to praise God for, inhale, exhale. That's something to praise God for. You're still here by the grace of God. And for that, we praise you. And for that, we glorify you. And for that, we can say we're blessing the city. We're blessing the field. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. And I give, <laughs> I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of the Lord. He's already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you got to do is open up your hearts. 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 Because God is already here. I'm going to say, God is already here can't you feel his presence he's already here all you have to do is open up your heart cause God is already here I need you to look at somebody and say God is he's already here can't you feel his presence he already here. All you have to do is open up your heart. Cause God is already here. I'ma say it again. God is. He's already here. Can't you feel this further? He's already here. Say all you have to do is open up your hearts. Come on, say God. Oh God. Oh God. It's already here. And I'm giving praise, everybody. Come on, give him praise, everybody. Give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you to tell somebody, say, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed, we're blessed, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. I want everybody to say it. Everybody say bless, 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 say bless, 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 say I'm blessed, say you're blessed, say everybody's blessed, everybody's blessed. Come on, say we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed when we come.
in the city. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I can't speak for you, but I'm blessed because I've been through too much now to worship him. Can you tell somebody, say, I've been through too much now to worship him. Tell them again, say, I've been through too much oh, to worship him. To worship him. I've been through too much. I've been, been through too much. Oh, to worship him. To worship him. If you believe me, y'all give God praise, everybody. Come on, give him praise, everybody. Come on, give him praise, everybody. Come on, give a praise, everybody. Yeah. Come on, give a praise, everybody. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, 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 yeah. I need you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, if you're going to sit by me, I need to make sure you're a praiser. Because after all that I've been through, I still, I still got joy. If you believe, you ought to say, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't got too much voice, but look at somebody else and say, after all that you've been through, you still, you still got joy. Now you ought to praise God for them. I don't know about you, but I feel like praising. I feel like giving them glory. Yeah! Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I need y'all to jump up and say, I got the victory. Come on. Jump up and say, I got the victory. Hey, 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 hey. Remember the grandma used to say, some of y'all probably know it. He said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. So when I come into the presence of God, I don't need you to pump me and prime me. But when I think of the goodness, hey, let my mind go back and wonder how I made it over. Hey, 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 hey. Call it. Say, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for what me. He's done for me. Yeah, yeah. Come on, put your hands together, everybody. Come on. The song says. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Say if you can tell it, let me tell it. What he's done for me. Say if you can tell it, let me tell it. What he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy, 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 joy. What he's done for me. I get joy, 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 joy. What he's done for me. I get joy, 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 joy. What he's done for me. I get joy, 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 joy. What he's done for me. Everybody clap your hands. Let's 
son. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, put your hands together. Hey, lay your hands on me, Jesus. I don't mind. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Say, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Say, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Praise everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give them praise, everybody. Thank you, son. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him in this place. Praise him. Praise him in this place. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. 
that revival we praise her. I come to be revived. I come to be refilled. Ask the Lord to fill me with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. The one thing I found out that when we come to revival, the revival is for the saints. We come to be revived. For the Lord to build us up where we're weak. To build us up where we're torn down. So I need you to lift your hands and say, Lord, revive me again. From the inside out, Lord, revive me again. From the inside out, oh Lord, Lord, revive me again. Refresh me again. Feel me again, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know about you, but I remember over about 16 years ago when the Lord saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I got saved calling on Jesus at the altar. Now, I can't testify for you how you got it. Some of us got it different ways, but it's okay. But the way I was raised, I got at the altar and I call on Jesus. And everybody know that when we first got down there, we're looking at everybody, one eye open, one eye closed. And so when everybody else buck, we buck. So I remember the time that on a Friday night, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I want you to feel me for real. Lord, I want this thing for real. Because if you did it for my friend, I know you can do it for me. But the one thing I found out in order for you to get filled, you got to have a mind. That's why the Bible said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So I remember the time when I got at the altar and I called on Jesus and I said, Jesus, Jesus. One of the mothers pat me in my back and said, call him like you want him. And I said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I'll never forget. I can hear the guitar, the big bass drum, and the drums, and everybody singing power, power, Lord. I, I can hear them singing that. But after I began to call them, it just seemed like everything, was, everything that was around me, I couldn't see nothing. I couldn't hear nothing. But the echo of my voice, and it was just me and Jesus. And when I said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then all of a sudden, that thing got on the inside. Jesus, 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 Jesus. So if you call on Jesus today, I promise he's going to touch you. He's going to heal your body. So that's my testimony. I got it when I was six years old. And I can say that through this journey, I went through trials. If anybody told you that once you get filled and once you come up, once you come over on the Lord's side that your troubles are over, they lied to you. That's when the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy even the more. But he said, but I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So all you got to do is say, Lord, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Can you just lift those hands and say, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up, Lord, till I overflow. Till I overflow. Till I overflow. Till I overflow. I don't want to run over. Yes, Lord. And I'm on my dad sent me the song today, Pastor Pharaoh. It was already in my spirit from last night when we was here. For those of us that were here, did the Lord move last night? Did the Lord have this way last night? Did the Lord feel to last night? Did he save, heal, and deliver? So I don't know about you, but some of you, you may came in here sick. You may came in here hurting. But I want to tell you that God wants to heal you. Everywhere you're hurt. From the, from the top to the bottom, he wants to touch your body. But all you got to do is just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you right away. Come on, can you say that? Lord, I need you right away. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift those hands and worship me. The song says, God wants to heal you. Everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt. 
God will see you through and it take the pain away that God wants to provide for you each and every day just lift your hands and say Lord I need you I need you right away. I'm going to sing it one more time. God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt. God will see you through and he'll take the pain away. He wants to provide for you each and every day just lift your hands and say Lord I need you I need you right away say God wants to heal you everywhere everywhere you hurt everywhere you hurt You through, you'll take the pain away. God wants to provide, God wants to provide for you each and every day. Each and every day, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you right away. So, God wants. God wants to heal you everywhere, everywhere you hurt, yeah, everywhere you hurt. God will see you through. He'll take the pain away. He'll take the pain away. God wants to provide for you each and every day. Say, your hand Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Need you right away. I need you right away. God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. Everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you God will see you through. He'll take the pain. Provide. God wants to provide for you each and every day. Each and every day. Lift your hands and say, Just your hands Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Stay right there. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Just lift your hands and worship him. Come on, worship. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Need you right away. I just heard this like a dance of needs the rain. I need you like the Ocean needs the streams. I need you like the morning needs the sun. I need you, Lord. You are my only one. I'ma say it again. Desert needs the rain. I need you like the ocean needs the streams. I need you like the 
morning needs a sign I need you Lord you are my only one come on say it like the devil needs a rain I need you you like the morning needs a stream I need you morning needs a sun needs the sun so I need you Lord you are my only one say it again like the devil needs a rain Like the morning, morning needs, needs the sun. The sun. Say, I need you like, like the morning needs the rain. I need you like the morning needs the rain. Like the God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you everywhere. Just lift your hands and say, Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need, need you right away. I need now come on, give God praise, everybody. As the MC come back to our front. Hallelujah. I got 
the healing. I got the all.
them now while you got the chance. I'm gonna praise them now because tomorrow ain't promised. Bible said, Boast not thyself on your power, but thou know not what a day shall bring. So I'm gonna praise them now. So if I don't wake up tomorrow, morning, people of God will say, He praised them yesterday. Now He praised them today. It's heaven! Get down, but now when you get saved, somebody got to pull you from 
somebody got to pull you, wind you up, just for you to give God glory. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Mm. We'll have a prayer by none other than Brother Ronald Rowley. Give him a hand, praise, as he come before the people of God. Remember now, he used to have dreads, and his pants used to hang down. And I, I pick at you about that sometimes. Yeah. Praise God! I hear tell that God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Isaiah is bold, Lord. Isaiah said, "Who had believed the report?" Father, we come before you this evening. Well, you have given the commandment that we are to drink freely. And our walk, Lord, we became a little weary. And this evening, this evening, Lord, we are at the wells of salvation, oh Lord God in heaven. And we receive the commandment, oh Lord God in heaven. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for refreshing. We thank you for fresh oil, Father. For receiving, oh Lord God in heaven. Lord, by faith, Lord, of the grace, Lord, that thou hast given unto us. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we may continue to be a witness to thy glory. Glory, oh Lord God in heaven, Lord. Forevermore, Lord, thou hast given us, Lord, the bread of life in Christ Jesus. Forevermore, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love to pray. I love to pray. Jesus told the disciples, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh probably didn't want to pray, but the spirit has an overrule and an override that the enemy can't handle. We thank God for prayer. Now let's have a scripture by no other than Wesley Painting. Praise him, church. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, Refresh my soul, O Lord. And to complement, hopefully, the scripture of this revival is Psalms 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from my secret plots of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. I have read for you Psalm 64, the first and the second verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and to the hearers of these words. Thank you. Isn't God word edifying? I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. I love the word of God. It fulfills, it sustains, it gives you strength, it brings deliverance. And at the end of it, it has promises. 
promises that we're going to have when we get on the other side. Tell your neighbor, I'm living to live again. No other. I like to give honor and glory to this great woman of God, Apostle Francis Lee. My grandma. The one that raised me. The one that taught me how to live safe. I feared all, but I came back. Because God hears the effectual perfect prayers of the righteous. Hallelujah. Woman been laboring for a long time. She been laboring before I even was born. Probably before I even ever thought of. Apostle, we love you. I love you. We give honor to the man of God that's going to bring the, red, the, the word of life. The bread of life. The bread of life. Apostle Jacoby Jones. He's anointed. He's appointed. I remember growing up in my granddaddy's house and we used to play church. All the time. I used to have to be the usher all the time. All the time. And only thing he wanted to do was lay hands. Only thing he wanted to do was lay hands. But one Saturday, I believe, we were playing church so hard in Drusilla with the feeling of power of God. And Grandma had to come and lay hands on her and pray for her. We stirred up the gift of God in that house at a young age. When people of God get on one accord, no matter how old you is, God will come in and he will stop with you. No other. We're going to have the welcome by this great man of God. Our leader, our under shepherd. Very anointed. Very anointed. The oil is over his life. The oil is over your life, pastor. Thank you for being a great leader. I called him today when he was on the job. I said, thank you for being a great leader. A great under shepherd. A great teacher. Pastor. Prophet, evangelist, apostle. Thank you for operating in all the gifts that God has bestowed upon his people. People of God of this ministry, follow behind him, get in order with him. Take in his teaching, listen to him when he speaks. God has put him in this place to change this place. Some people have been born and raised in here and they still being born and raised. Still being born and raised. Pastor asked the pastor done came and you going this way, you're going back. You're going this way and going back. And you're going this way and coming. But God has placed somebody right here for you. Only thing you got to do is trust and believe. Give him your hand and he will let you know how to get to the other side. Stop being complacent. Stop being ordinary. Come out of being ordinary and just come to God. Obey the man of God when he say something. If he rebuke you, you just take it with love. Because the only thing he's doing, he's showing you how to be stronger when it's your time. Everybody can't be a leader. Everybody can't be a pastor. Everybody can't walk to the, the, the coordinates of God. Many are called, but few are chosen. I don't want to keep talking about them. Pastor, come Come on, Jalen. Oh, come on, Josh. I was thinking about Jonathan. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise God, praise God. I want to thank God for my being here today. Uh, Pastor and first lady of the church, Mount Pisgah. Um, give honor to the uh, preacher that's giving a word on today. And evangelist, thank God for you. Uh, do we have any visitors? First time? No? Okay. Well, here um, our theme is we are changing lives through the power of God's love. And I want to thank you all for taking out the time. So some of you came far, some of you came close. But regardless of that, I thank you all, each and every one of you, one by one, name by name, for coming here and deciding to worship and lift up the name of Jesus with us today. Does anybody have anything they would like to say? Yes. Well, we hope that y'all have a good time. We hope that y'all come back uh, to worship with us on Sundays. And we also have a prayer on Wednesday at 730 um, on, on the prayer line. So if, if you need any further information on that, you can get with Pastor and First Lady. And they'll kind of give y'all some more info on that. But none other, back to the hands of the uh, MC.
That what happen when you're on a high. That's say Jonathan Farrell Jr. And I'm thinking pastor about to come give the welcome. Great God. I'm feeling real good tonight. I felt real good when I woke up this morning too from last night. I was tired, but I know how to pray. I know how to grab a hope to the word. And my favorite scripture is Psalms 28 and 8. The Lord is their script and he's the saving script of his anointed. It's time to bring your gifts into God's storehouse. I'm going to keep, I'm going to move on because I can stay up here. Time to give. The ushers will come around to you and somebody will give us a great song. Evangelist got so you want to give us an offering song? Minister David, J David Reed. Cash at the dollar sign. Three ways to give. Cash app, dollar sign, Mount Pisgah, Clio, GiveLify, Mount Pisgah. You can mail it in at P.O. Box 3. P.O. Box 5, Clio, Georgia, 31303. Or you can bring it in. Father, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the hearts that gave on today, God. We thank you, God, for the seeds that were sown in secret. God, we know, God, that it is good ground. The grounds have already been watered, God, and we tell you, we thank you. We thank you, God, oh Lord, for the great increases that you have already given to us, God. We thank you, God, for the allowances, God, that you provide unto us, oh Lord. We thank you, God, for you being the source of our life. We thank you, God, for meeting every need in here on tonight, God. 
God continue God to bless your people God God continue God to help their cups overflow overflow God that they will be able to give God unto other people lives so into other people lives God let the blessings rain down from heaven on tonight God God let none of your people God lack nothing anymore God when it comes to God funds God Father bless them in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we will always and continue to pray amen amen Brother Williams wasn't here tonight or tomorrow. He won't be here tomorrow. He'd been here last night, but he left $100, 50 for tonight and 50 for tomorrow. We thank him for just leaving his offering. He could have took it. He could have just gave $5 for tonight and 5 for tomorrow. But we thank God for him just get, leaving his offering with a man that he know would not rob him. If I was on drugs, he wouldn't have gave me that money because I would have been to the dope man house. Smoking it up, been to the packet shop, buying me a half a gallon. But I'm saved, sanctified, sealed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. For praise is calmly for the upright. We thank God. We're going to move on. We're going to move on, but I just want to give a quick testimony. I'm going to give a quick testimony. Someone called me the other week, told me my name, told me where I stayed at, told me my zip code. Said he was from the bank. I believed him. Gave him my information to my bank account. Stayed on the phone with me. He stayed on the phone with me until I washed my hair. The enemy tricked me. Sir, your funds gonna go down, but they're gonna go up. Go down and go down. And my wife woke up this Sunday morning. She said, Baby, yeah, your money is half gone. I said, Huh? $900. Monday morning come. Another 13. Got a new debit card that Monday. Set up my cash app again to draw money out for someone giving me a birthday. And as soon as I did it, they wiped me clean. The bank called me. She said, Mr. Herbert, she said, we're going to shut it down. I said, how much money I got left? She said, $300. I said, I got to pay my mortgage. But God knows how to keep a ram in the bush. He knows how to give you wisdom and instruction. He will keep people in line to help you. I didn't ask nobody for no money but one person. And he gave it to me without even second guessing. If you need any more help, just let me know. But that shows me that God is still a provider. He didn't have to mail me no money. The money was already there. Only thing I had to do was that. I thank God for him being a provider. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. I was hurting inside, but I wasn't showing it on the outside. The lady at the bank, she said, Mr. Herbert, you don't seem like you're up and down. You don't seem like you're sad. I got something greater in me. I got something greater in me that will overcome all my doubts, all my difficulties. She said, man, but I thank God for just being a provider. I went into prayer. God told me five. I said, five, Lord, I don't got it. He said, five. But now, but now as the bill's been paid, the mortgage has been paid, I'm going to sow a seed Sunday for $500. He said five. I know he didn't ask for $5, not $50, not $150. He said five. And the only thing I can imagine was zero. I'm going to sow a seed Sunday for $500. Just for my God being a provider. Some people don't got it right now. I don't really have it. But I'm going to give it and I'm going to trust in him. I don't want blessings. I just want my seed to go before me as the years come. I'm showing now for later. Elder Jones will come up. 
introduce the man of God that's going to give us the word. He's got a flaming fire inside. I know he do. I seen him walking pew since we were young. Elder Jones, come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for my mommy being here tonight. Thank God for Pastor Farrell. I'm going to be real quick. I thank God for my son. Amen. He's my oldest now. And I thank God for his lovely wife back there. And my grandbabies. I'm a grandma, y'all. Ain't nothing like being a grandma. I didn't know it could feel this good. Oh, I'm sorry. It's about you. Sorry. I'm sorry. But I just want to thank God for Apostle Jones. Y'all, I he my son. Thank God for Jacoby. And I thank God for his life. And I'm telling y'all, he lives everything. He says, and I, I just get really, really tickled, and I'm grateful to God that God chose him to be the man of God that he is. Um, if you haven't heard him preach, you're in for a treat, and I present to some and introduce to others none other than Apostle Devin Jacoby Jones. Come on, thank God. Come on, let's give God praise. That's all right for me. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. That's nice for me. Now give God some praise. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the great I am, the Alpha and Omega. Come give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, open your mouth and give him praise. If God's been good to you, give him praise. Lift your voice and shout, yeah! Yeah! Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I'll obey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Got another yes, Lord. In my soul. Yes. 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 Shine down the whole side. Give God praise for who he is in our lives, certainly to the shepherd of this house, Pastor Pharaoh, to his lovely wife in the back, God bless you, to my pastor, my apostle, the queen of deliverance, Apostle Nix, to my lovely wife, Lady Jones, to all of you that make up the household of faith, you may be seated, I'm going to try to ease my way on through this for a second here. This is night number five that I've been preaching this week, and I'm tired. <laughs> preached on Sunday, got up, went to work Monday, preached on Monday night, got up, went to work Tuesday, preached on Tuesday night, got up and went to work today, Wednesday. See, I'm all messed up. Preached on Wednesday night, got up and went to work today, and I'm preaching tonight. Got to get up tomorrow and I'm preaching Friday, but you best believe Saturday. On the sixth, seventh day, he rested. And I'm going to rest. Praise the Lord. But I thank God, amen, for being in the house of the Lord. And I want to thank God for our minister, Justin. Amen. He has been on this five-day journey with me. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for him. Amen. People have offered to come, and I told them, no, just stay home. Because Claxton is a bit of a drive, Amen. and that's where we were going. And uh, I didn't want, you know, some of them a little older than me, so I know if I'm tired, they'll be tired. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to have Elder Sapp with us tonight. Amen. Amen. 
So glad to have him with us tonight. Amen. I am just grateful to be here. Amen. In the house of the Lord. And I tell you what, uh, you know how the scripture says, one plant, one water, God gives the increase. That's all I thought about when Tony was up here. Grandma planted, Pastor Pharaoh's watering it, and God has given the increase. When I think about, amen, when our brother was taken from us, how he was just strung out on drugs and alcohol. And in the matter of eight years, God done did a whole turnaround. You can't tell me God isn't a deliverer. You can't tell me that God won't make a way. His wife was with him during those times when he was drinking and smoking. She ain't gave up on him, but she stayed before God. If you cry out to God, he'll deliver. Let's go to St. Mark, St. Mark chapter 4. I feel the Holy Ghost. If you pray for me, I think I'll get through it tonight. Amen. I'm just so glad to be here. Amen. I'm so glad to be able to preach in front of you all. Amen. What the young man here brought me inside. He said, how was your drive here? I said, won't but a hop and a skip. <laughs> I, said, I ain't had to hardly travel nowhere tonight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I appreciate that because once I get from here, I don't have to drive an hour and a half to get home. I'm going home and I'm going to sleep. Praise the Lord. But I give the Lord praise. Amen. I'm going to give you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And we're going to do this kind of quickly here. I'm going to give you my scriptures and then we're going to try and do a little something here. Lip, uh, Excuse me, Jawan. <laughs> we're going to go to Mark chapter 4, yeah. verses 37 through 39. Jonah chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 1, and we'll see how far we go there. And then Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. And then we're going to wrap all this together and see what God has for us tonight. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. I tell you what, I, I, I just got so uh, excited and full when I see the young men worshiping and praising God. I believe that when God sees men praise him, it looks like what he would do if he was a male in the flesh. Amen. And I give God praise. Let's try Alpha and Omega. Amen. We're going to do the short version, uh, Jawan. And then we're going to go to St. Mark. Amen. How many know that we give him all the glory? He deserves it. It's no goodness of our own that we are alive, but the goodness of the Lord. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, he is Alpha. He is, alpha. He is, omega. He is omega. He's the beginning and the end. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. Our Lord, you worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are
Come on, all over the building. We give you all. We church and I think y'all can church all night too not me I got to go <laughs> I'm not going to hold you tonight but I feel the glory of God so let's get here to St. Mark let's get to St. Mark let me do this very quickly I feel the strength of God yeah I feel the strength of God 
I'm telling you, I was sitting in that chair, I felt like I was going to fall out. I was so tired. But I feel the strength of God. St. Mark, St. Mark. Come on, let's, let's, let's go there. St. Mark, St. Mark. Are you going to read for me, Mom? All right, wonderful. St. Mark, chapter 4, verse 37 through 39. Mm -hmm. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Let's turn to Jonah chapter 1. Let's go ahead. I, we got a little time. Let's read verses 1 through 15. I need to get you the concept of it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's go there. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish for the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let, ca let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. Mm -hmm. So they cast lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto him, Unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven which have made the sea and the dry land. Yes. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temperous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great temptest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Romans 13, verse 11 through 14. I'm going to make it all make sense. Don't make it all make sense. Jesus was sleeping. Jonah was sleeping. Okay. All right. Romans 13. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Mm -hmm. For now is our salvation nearer 
than we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting or drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife or envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now we thank God for the reading of his word. I'm a different type of preacher, so I'll give you my subject in just a little bit. Uh, I teach a little bit and then I you know, go from there. So just sit with me. I'm not going to bore you, but you got to follow me in order to see where we're going. So Mark, in Mark here, we're following a day of ministry. Jesus instructed his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Jesus and his disciples departed in clear weather. Everything looked fine and well. Jesus, after dealing with the multitude, was physically exhausted. He got on the boat, went to, to the back of the boat, and fell asleep. Now, don't fool yourself. He is God in the flesh. So he knew exactly what was getting ready to take place. Nothing in your life catches God by surprise. This five-mile trip of clear weather was interrupted by fierce gale of wind that arose and waves were breaking over the bow of the ship. The disciples went to him crying out to Jesus asking in our terms, so you just going to lay here and sleep while we die. So you don't care how this is about to end. I want you to understand that Jesus' presence in the boat did not prevent the situation at hand. Nor did Jesus, nor did his sleep indicate a lack of care for those who followed them. But rather that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, directed them into the boat knowing chaos was coming. I would suggest to you this is an indication that Jesus intended to use the storm to teach his disciples a lesson. That they that fear is not of God, but it is a lack of faith. Tell your neighbor, fear is not of God. It is a lack of faith. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of sound mind. When you allow fear to come upon you, you allow doubt to de deal with inside of you. Tell your neighbor, push away fear so that you won't have any doubt. Just as the disciples feared their storm, we too have feared during our storms and chaotic moments. But remember, Jesus is always there. He's a present help in the time of trouble. Jesus is content through the entire chaotic event. He simply says, peace, be still. So now here we go to Jonah. God has commanded Jonah with executive orders to go to Nineveh and preach against the wickedness. Uh, but Jonah refused and boards a ship going to Tarshish, which is the opposite direction from where he was instructed to go. How many of us are doing the exact opposite of what God had instructed us to do in this season? Because of people and discomfort, it may present. How many of you did God tell, I heard Antonio talking, what well, God may have told you to go hug so-and-so, but because you heard that that person said something ill about you, you don't want to obey God. Instead of you hugging them, you go hug your friend because it makes you feel good because your friend tell you when you're right, even when you're wrong. But I come to tell you when you are disobedient to God, every bit of turmoil in your life begins to unfold. Tell your neighbor, we've got to be obedient to God. Because of his disobedience, God sends a violent wind that threatens to sink the ship. Chaos is now present. The Lord was at work in the midst of his disobedience. I want you to understand now while all this is going on, Jonah is asleep. This sleep is very much different from the sleep of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 4. 
He is content with the situations at hand because he just could not see himself going to minister to those people who had damaged his life. If you do some research, and I can't do it tonight because we're not in Bible study, but those same people that God had told him to go preach to were the same people that took the lives of his family. So what I find funny is a non-believer instructs Jonah, the man of God, to pray to his God that peace would fall. Isn't that strange that you are the saint of God and when things happen at your job, you're the first one to get so upset and irate and ready to throw things and it takes your boss who don't even know God to say, all right, calm down now. Ain't the situation a little funny, don't you think? Instead, he simply tells them, just throw me overboard. Before I do what God is wanting me to do, I'd rather die. So now here in Romans chapter 13, Paul discusses the believer's responsibilities towards society. The earlier scriptures, uh, verses of chapter 13, he explains what we are to do and why we are to do it. He instructs them that they must continue to love, which brings us to where we are in this part of chapter 13, that we are to continue to look. The realization is we must know and need to know that the Lord's coming is very soon. Yeah. Scripture tells us that no man knows the day and the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. All of us have a number that we're going to be called one day or another. You may live to your 95, you may only live to your 35, but when God calls your number, you got to get out of here. It's not the problem of knowing we got to die. The problem is you don't know when you're going to die. And everybody's walking around acting like they're never going to leave this world. Oh, I got time. I ain't but 16. I got time to be saved. Oh, I'm 45 now, and I done made it this far. I still got a little time before you come for me. Time waits on nobody. I don't care how powerful you think you are. I don't care how much money you have in the bank. Time waits on nobody. Tell your neighbor, time is running out. I know, I know, I know you said you heard it ever since you was a child that the Lord is coming real soon, but you best believe he's here sooner than he was when you was a child. Scripture tells us that he's coming like a thief in the night. A thief comes unannounced. A thief comes without invitation. God don't have to have an invitation to take you out of here because the same God that made you is the same God that's going to take you time of salvation is near scripture instructs us that we must work while it is day because when night comes no man no man when you die it ain't no working at that point that's it so everything you did before you took your last breath that is it so I chose to reference this scripture in verse 11 in line with Jonah as it exhorts to awaken from the sleep of disobedience while the world perishes. Tell your neighbor, chaos is all around. But you must choose to be okay. Now it gives me here to our place that I want to give you my subject. And I'm going to try to do a little something and I'm going to get out of your way it's 9.16 p.m. and we're going to try to get out of here and I'm going to be done in about 14 minutes if the Lord says the same. Yeah. But I want to use for a subject content while chaos is all around. Yeah. Tell your neighbor content yeah. while chaos yeah. is all around. Content means a state of peace or acceptance. Is adequate despite wanting more or better. Chaos is defined as complete disorder or confusion, uproar, havoc, disruption, commotion. Here we have two 
chaotic situations in Mark and in Jonah. We have two chaotic situations. Both are on a boat at sea. Both are presented with a storm. However, one situation is going in the right direction and the other one is not. All levels of contentment are not good. Let me say it again. All levels of contentment are not good. I was sharing with the church on Sunday. This isn't in my notes, but I just want to give you this little side nugget. I was sharing with my church on Sunday as I preached that men seem to get content faster than women. Men just say amen. You know it's the truth. We seem to get complacent faster than women. My mother, my father divorced, and we were paying, my wife and I were in a home where we were paying $1,050 a month renting. And my mother said, look, stop paying that. Come move in with me. Y'all take the master bedroom, put that money aside, and then y'all can buy your house. So I said, okay. I like my mama. <laughs> and her and my wife get along so well, so it didn't matter to me one way or the other. So we took the master bedroom. Had a crib because Jordan, our youngest, that's still the youngest until August, she was in the crib, and Jayla, we got a little taller bed. It was enough room. <laughs> My wife started telling me, okay, we're running out of space. But me as a man, I got content. We had lights that I was paying for. We still had food. I got a car. She was driving. I was working. Everything was wonderful. Everything was peachy, in my opinion. I ain't got to give somebody a thousand and something dollars, you know, and, you know, everything's wonderful. As a man, I got content. So, you know, I purchased some land for my wife, for a daycare that we're planning to build, and that was my focus. Let's try to get this business up before I put my credit on a house. My wife ended up getting pregnant again. And she said, now, it's already four of us in this room. You need to find us a house. But I done went and bought both of the, took the crib out, bought both of the girls a little toddler bed, and I made so much room. Everybody was saying how big the room started. Oh, look, you got more space. So when we found out she was pregnant, I said, well, baby, we can take this crib and put it right in front of the bed. I had gotten content. Let me put more money aside. You don't need to do that. Let's get this business up and running. And you know, my wife is a very quiet woman. She don't argue. Even if I try to make her argue, she ain't going to argue. A woman's got a way of showing you that she's not satisfied without even saying anything. She ain't got to walk around, at least my wife don't walk around with an attitude, but you can feel that she's not satisfied. Well, you know how they say happy wife, happy life. I figured I needed to start looking for somewhere to go. Here again, it won't no, no commotion and no problem because her, my mother, I think, loved my wife better than she loved me sometimes. We had help with the girls. I was just content. So I go back to tell you, all contentment is not good. So we started praying and fasting and getting counsel from a leader and all of that. And just this past Friday, tomorrow will be a, a week ago, we signed and purchased us our own 2,100 square foot house, full bedroom, three bath. But here I am still content. I'm slowly trying to move in because I just like being in Clio. But all contentment is not good. Jesus was content in the midst of chaos because he knew the end result would be that of peace. But Jonah was content in the midst of chaos because he just refused to do the will of God. So he had an it is what it is motto. 
He had that, I'm not going to let nothing disturb my peace, mind frame. And how many of us are willing to say, I'm not going to let anything disturb my peace, even if it means that I'm not going to obey God? You're in a dangerous place when you don't obey the God that created you. Understand that there are times where the instructions of God is going to disturb the peace that you've created for yourself but will bring you the peace that he has given for you that will pass all understanding. He'll give you that peace that when you are at rock bottom today, Antonio, that peace that God gives you will have you that your mortgage is paid and you still got a little left over. Tell your neighbor, it's the peace that surpasses all understanding for me. So which scenario of contentment are you in today? It's one thing to be content while chaos is all around, while you're being obedient to God. But it's another thing when you are content in your disobedience. When we entered into the year of 2020, we entered with no knowledge no natural knowledge that the world would turn into such a chaotic atmosphere. It was chaotic because there were racial injustices, political wars, COVID-19, family betrayals, and so much more. And these, all these issues are still prevalent and still here in 2021. COVID is still taking people out. Now we have people that are telling you you need to stay woke and don't get the vaccine. Well, I'm here to tell you, Scripture says that you can drink of any deadly poison and it wouldn't harm you. So I went ahead and took the Pfizer vaccine just to be safe. Now I'm not telling you to take it if you have a problem with it, but I want you to know that you've got to do what feels the best in your spirit. Fear is what will bring on symptoms that make you think you're going to die. So are you content because that you are in his will or are you content because you just don't feel like it's worth giving the fight? We can be real for a moment. The year of 2020 placed us somewhere between the following, between tragedy and triumph, between pain and promise, between disaster and destiny. Between I don't care and I'm going to fight. Yeah. I employ of you to change scenarios. If you are in the place of contentment of disobedience, I would employ you this evening to change your mindset. It tells us that without your mind will I do nothing. God has given all of us self-will. And because he's given us self-will, it gives us the ability and the mindset to do what we feel that we want to do. God is not a predator. He's not going to rape or molest you. He's going to give you that will to do what you feel that you need to do. I want you to understand that we must come content in obedience. Salvation doesn't give you a free ticket away from chaos, but it gives you the assurity that you'll come out all right. I want to encourage you that nobody told me that the road would be easy. Ah, but I've come too far to turn around now. We didn't tell you that when you gave God your hand, the right hand of fellowship, that you would not lose loved ones along the way. Ah, because when you have God on the inside, that when others go into a deep depression, can you see? Yes, Lord. Because you got God on the inside, the same one that didn't have salvation when they lost their mother or their father. 
they committed suicide. Ah, but you had a good thing down on the inside uh, that when you were dealing with constant situations of chaos, uh, that God said, peace be still. Uh, can you see? Yes, Lord. Uh, ah, but I want to encourage you uh, that when you get on the side of obedience, contentment, uh, while chaos is all around, uh, tell your neighbor I can be content uh, because I know that God's going to bring me out. Uh, they are lying on me, but I'm content. Uh, they are talking about me and scandalizing my name, but I'm content. Uh, ah, they walk away from me but I'm content can you see yes Lord my bills are behind but I'm content can you see yes Lord again I feel all alone but I'm content ah, it hurts but I'm content I got sickness running through my body but I'm content is there anybody in here that can say come what may and come what goes I'm a stand still right where I am all odds are against me but I'm still content tell your neighbor stand still and see the salvation of the Lord I hear the word say but not thyself because of evil doers and don't be envious of those who are workers of iniquity because they're going to wither like the green grass and the green herbs. I come to tell somebody tonight, you don't have to fear because God's down on the inside. I heard Galatians 6 and 9 say, and be not weary in well-doing because in due season ye shall reap if you faint not. Tell your neighbor, been endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I hear the word say, they that wait. Y'all don't want to help me tonight. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary Whoa, I'm content because in the midst of chaos I can call on Jehovah Jehovah Shalom the Lord of our peace Jehovah Jireh the Lord our provider Jehovah Tiskanu the Lord our righteousness Jehovah Rapha the Lord that healeth thee and Jehovah Shammah the Lord is present Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down, I got to throw you in the fiery furnace. Those boys were content because they knew the end result that God was going to bring them out. They said, I'm gone. He is able uh, to deliver us uh, and it's 930 uh, so I got to get out of here uh, they said I'm gone uh, I'm gone uh, he is able uh, to deliver us uh, well uh, it didn't change nothing uh, the king got so mad uh, he said turn up the furnace uh, seven times harder uh, it's so funny uh, that in the presence uh, of your enemies uh, God will still protect you. Those that threw the boys in, it was so hard that it burned them up, but never touched the boys. Can you see? Yes, Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were tied up. But one thing about it, when you're in the midst of chaos, God, he'll step right in. God, he'll bring you out. throw in three and now I see four and the fourth one looks like the image of the son of God well well when they threw him in the boys changed their words they didn't say he's able but they said he will able doesn't denote a surety but will denotes a surety they said bring him out well the boys came out with their hands up 
chaos was all around. I want to encourage you as I get ready to go to my seat. That when chaos is all around, the fire that was there to destroy you, it won't harm you. Those boys came out. No burnt clothes, no smelling of smoke. When you're in the will of God, nothing, nothing, nothing can move you. Nothing can shake you. Nothing can change you. Jesus, when it was time for him to be crucified, it was chaos all around. Peter, cut off a ear. She said, no, no, boy. That's not the way that we ought to do it. They beat him 40 times. Save one. They pierced him in his side. He had two on both sides of them but God was content cause he said there's no need for me to worry he said no man take my life I give it away he said father father I commit my spirit to you he bowed his head then he died they took him down he descended into hell and ran Revival. He said, well, there's such a great cloud of witnesses. They put them in the tomb. Well, well, my God. He saw his disciples. They said, what we going to do? He said, I'm going to send you a comforter. That'll help you on through this. When you have the comforter down on the inside in every chaotic chaotic event. Take this off of my neck. Every chaotic event. No. Just choke off. In every chaotic event. God told me to tell you when you got the comforter down on the inside. Everything will be alright. Tell your neighbor peace be still. I never seen the righteous forsaken though his seed begging bread they that wait i'ma say it one more time they that wait upon the lord he shall renew their strength i know i know they got it out for you but tell your neighbor no effort no effort father gets me shall prosper every tongue that comes up against me shall shall be cast down he gonna take them out i don't care what's going on but when you got the peace of god and your bills are due he gonna bring you out your marriage may be in a wreck but i'm content in the midst of chaos Everything on my job, whoa, everything on my job is going wrong, but I, but I, I'm content because the promises of God are yea and amen. If he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it, shall he? Is there anybody here that's going through a chaotic situation but you can stand still and know that God gonna bring you out you can stand still and know it's gonna be all right I don't care how hard it gets tell your neighbor fight the good fight of faith when they lie on you fight when they talk about you fight when they scandalize your name fight don't run away don't run away stay right there at the dirt on the same stand in your hand shout yeah shout yeah 
don't know my story All the things that I've been through I can't explain it But God, but God You don't know I had to sleep in the dark But God, you don't know I didn't know where my next meal was coming from But God, is there a but God in this house? But God, he brought me out in the midst of chaos. I was content. I kept on coming. I kept on smiling. And you didn't know that I was going through. But let me tell you one thing. God brought me out and I won't go back. No, I won't go back. I said the old saints used to say My Lord, he's been good to me Jesus, he set me free No, no, no Tell your name, I won't go back I'm all right. I got to sit with God. I ain't going back. I ain't going back. I don't care what comes. I don't care what goes. Come hell or high water. I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers, the rivers of living water. I shall not. I shall not. I shall not. I shall not. I shall not be moved. You can push me, but I'ma stand right here. I'm a long time until God breaks my chain. Change, change, change me, oh God. Lift your hands and shout, change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. David say, create, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Go tell three people, my change is here right now. I'm not leaving the way I came. He brought me out. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet up. that's in here right now. I curse heart disease right now. I see a valve blockage somewhere. But I curse it right now. You may not even know, but I see a blockage in somebody's heart in a valve. But I curse it right now. Freeway, freeway, freeway. Blood flow, blood flow. My uncle called me tonight when I was reading, getting ready for church. Could barely catch his breath. I got mad with the devil. And he's called. I said, now he know I got to go to church. What are you calling this late for? Holy Ghost said, answer the phone. Yeah. Hey, yes, Lord. hey, Kobe. I, 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 talking. I said, the devil is a liar. Yes, yes. Pastor just prayed for him last night. Uh -huh. yeah, I didn't call for nothing. I said, no, I'm going to pray if I hang up this phone. <laughs> Men ought to always pray and not faint. He told us to pray without ceasing. As I was driving, I'm going to get back to Uncle David. The Lord told me to tell you to prepare for the bishopric. I 
I start to call you Bishop Farrell, but I said I don't want to run out, get it, get cut, you know, get thrown out. But the time is now. You've done the work. So anyway, I just had to tell you that. Let us know when you do the service. We're going to come. We're right down the road. I ain't talking about three and four years from now. Within the year, he needs to be a bishop. He's the husband of one wife. And obviously, he is a good man. His son's in here worshiping God. So, I prayed with Deacon Reed. I first prayed for my uncle. Then I prayed for my chairman deacon, our chairman deacon. I said, now, Lord, you brought him out. He was at death's door with COVID. I said, now, I know the seeds that he's sown is what brought him out. I said, but them seeds go farther than that. It's going to heal him completely. I said, lungs breathe the breath of God. And I rebuke that worry in his mind. You know, at our church, we all right as long as our pastor don't tell us there's something wrong. So after I prayed with him, he said, well, I started to worry because pastor was crying last night. I said, no, pastor won't cry because she afraid. We thought you was by yourself and we didn't know who was going to get to you. I said, she won't cry out of fear. Because if she feared, then you, you wouldn't have made it to this day. I said, but you're going to be all right. I said, when your doctor's appointment? He said, the 28th and the 29th. I said, God, I want you to show a miracle in his body. By the time he goes, I said, you got 14, 11, 12 days. God, do something crazy. When you plant seeds in the ground, long as the ground is good, they got to come up. I'm getting ready to go, but I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Content in the midst of chaos. Hallelujah. The Lord getting ready to do something big for you. I feel a career change. I see a career change for you. Yes, Lord. What kind of work you do right now? And if I, okay, yeah, if I see a career change. Now, when I say career change, are you in an office? Yeah, I see an office. That's what career change. Now, you ain't got to lead Georgia Pacific, but you ain't got to do the little people stuff. You're going to big places. God going to put you in places that degrees can't put you. I said, God said it. I see. Glory, 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 glory. And listen, that run won't just for you, but it was for your marriage too. you Lord you know what I'm talking about run one more time for it run one more time for it hey 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 on, but the Lord had me to look at you when I was sitting here, and the Lord told me to tell you that he's going to wipe every tear from your eyes. 
You're smiling, but there's some struggling going on. But the Lord told me to tell you that he's seen your tears, and if you can just wait a little bit longer, your breakthrough is on the way. Punch your hands and tell them breakthrough's on the way. Listen, when, when, I don't need them, I'm okay. When beavers build a dam, it holds water back. I see a wall that you put over your heart because of heartbreak and damage that goes way back even to when you were a child. But God said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Even though you put that, that block there, the rivers of living water about to burst it. And God gonna fill that emptiness with the true love that you need. And it is so in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and tell God yes. Give it to us, God. Oh. All right, we got to go, we got to go. Oh, oh, oh. I'm glad you're here because the Lord wanted me to lay hands on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint him and put the gospel in his belly. Help him to win young men. Wait, wait, I heard, I heard, I heard. I heard boys to men. I heard, I heard boys to men. It's a ministry that God is birthing out of you called boys to men. Is this, is this Bishop's son? His nephew? Stay with Bishop. You hear me? You stay with him. I, I, I saw boys to men. The Lord is going to use you to help troubled boys and prime them to be where you are now. I see some things that you were in in the past. Yeah, I see some things you were in the past and that's why God is, is anointing you for this boys to men. Because you, 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 you know, know where you were and where God has you now. And had God not turned your life around, you should have been dead three years ago. But God changed your life. It is Shondo. And I call by Naya. Lord, you give him the knowledge, the will, and the power to win these young men. See, you, you can win souls that I can't win. You heard what Tony said. I've been a pastor playing church ever since we were children. So a lot of things that you may win them over with, I can't do it. Bring them in and Bishop can keep them in. Praise the Lord. I see boys to men seek the Lord for the next three months write the vision of boys to men and make it plain and the Lord said then you shall present it to your leader and he will give you direction on when and how to move forward point your hands to him and say and it is so Point your hands to him and say, and it is so. In Jesus' name. Miss, Miss, Miss Arlene. Miss Arlene, is your mom home? 
When you get home, you know that's my buddy. You tell her Jacoby said to live. I see something going on in her body. But you tell her I say live. Tell her she don't have to leave here till she ready. Tell her I say spouse back up. Sprouse back up. Tell her I want that old mother housing. You tell her Jacoby said live. Oh, Shania. All right, I got to go. I really, I really got to go. said to tell your story. You've healed, but it was a time to get you to a place of healing. And the Lord said to forgive the individual tonight. Because believe it or not, the individual is holding your full breakthrough. You've healed from the pain, but you didn't heal from the individual that caused the pain. You know, we can sing and shout through pain to make ourselves feel like we done let it go. But the Lord told me to tell you, tonight, forgive the individual. He's healed you from the pain. But the individual still has control over you. You don't hate them. You, you don't hate them. But it's hard to, to forgive them for what had happened. But the Lord said, if you forgive them tonight, before the year is out, Watch how everything you ask of God, he's going to answer for you. See, you got to have a clear line in order for God to give it to you. All right. Get ready to go. Now, I'm going to speak this to Tiffany and Tony. And Pastor, can I just use you for a second? Come here, Tiffany. Apostle, yes, ma'am. Y'all hold hands. I am rebuking that spirit of barrenness from both of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this union with a child in the name of Jesus. Open up both reproductive systems in the name of Jesus. Excuse me, I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. Y'all please just let Apostle touch, touch them. I don't mean any harm. She's got hands that, that, has, that has made people have babies that couldn't have them. So I don't mean no harm. I just, we got to obey God. Ah, yes, yeah, so. God open up the womb and open up the male reproductive system. Give them that child now. You've given them a house, now give them a baby to go in those rooms. Shantatakashaya. There's nothing too hard for you. And we are on one accord. Point your hands to them and say, and it is so. And so it is. Listen, listen, God told me to tell both of you, don't think about it. Don't anticipate it because it's bringing fear and doubt. I don't care how, how many times y'all tried. 
God said, don't think about it. It shall come. Tell your neighbor, it shall come. Ho! All right. to do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask a thing. The Gatson family, the Lord said, you all are trying to settle for something less than what he wants you to have. Well, Lord, how can I get it? And, and I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know how I'll be able to do that. I don't know how to be able to do X, Y, Z, 3rd, and 4th. It's bringing doubt. It's bringing fear. He said, get what you want. Well, that is what I know. There's a desire for even more. Sometimes we feel like this is the best that I can do. This is the best that I can have. And anything is better than what I got now. But God says it's time for y'all to be happy and live your faithfulness to pastor and to the church I know y'all weren't able to always financially do what you desired but you never stop with faithfulness don't settle if you want a house get a house you don't have to settle for now when I say this I don't mean no disrespect if you, if you don't have to settle for a mobile home, ain't nothing wrong with it. That's where I live right now. I'm not saying, please, please understand me. But God said you're coming out of where you are. You both are coming out of where you are. And the address is changing. And the address is changing. I go as far as to say, and the state is changing. Y'all heard me? I said, I go as far and say the state is changing. Y'all get from out of South Carolina. Come on over to the Peach State. Pastor just told her Georgia. I'm going. Hopefully I did all right. Y'all invite me back again. I live down the road. So anytime you need me, I run down here. Content in the midst of chaos. These, y'all, y'all daddy's sons, right? You and you. Come here. Sons, come here for a second. have what a lot of young men desire a father figure and I know y'all love your daddy because I see how y'all you know y'all smile and stuff at one another and God gonna make it because I don't know your father personally like that but I feel like your dad is a very hard worker. And he just keep going and going and going and going. And y'all want to really bless your mom and dad when y'all when y'all are able to get, you know. And God going to make it happen. You hear me? Stick by Bishop. That's what I'm going to call him. Now, y'all ain't got to call him that, but I'm going to call him. I guess the correct Bishop-elect, whatever, but Bishop. Stick by your father. The Lord is raising up one of you to be his successor as it pertains to pastoring. And the other of you, the Lord said he's raising up to be a financial 
uh, trustee ordeal. I see a, I see a business idea in your father, almost like Pharaoh and son, something like that. It's a business in Bishop's belly. And, 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 and one of you are going to be on the spiritual, the church side. Now, both of you are going to be in both aspects, but one is going to be entrusted with ministry, and the other will be entrusted with the business. Don't, thank you, Pastor, don't allow jealousy to set in. Don't let it happen. Well, I don't want to preach. I, my brother, he, his salary more than mine, and, and I ain't getting nothing. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Yes, yeah, yeah, no Jacob and Esau. Because God told me to tell both of you that when you stay together, when one comes up, the other will be up right with them. You hear me? I know which one is going to be the preacher. And I know which one going to be the businessman. But I ain't going to tell you. And it may not be the one y'all think going to be which one. Because man look on the outward appearance. God look on the heart. That's all I'm going to say. Seek the face of God. Stick together. And I see a young lady that don't mean one of y'all no good. Let her go. Because it's, it, it, is, it is a trap. I see a trap that she going to be just like Delilah. And she going to take your strength. And she going to make you a daddy before it's time. God said, let her go. You know she fast yourself. God said, let her go. Because a child will alter where he's trying to take you. God said, let her go. All right. God bless you. How you doing? Huh? You doing good? I need you to be doing very good. Good ain't enough. Pastor told, told us a couple of Sundays ago, there is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is temporary. Joy is lasting. Y'all, I'm over time, and I hope I'm, I, thank you. Thank you. I, I really, I got a test that I'm supposed to take by 1159, and it ain't going to happen. I'm going to just fail the class. Yeah, no, I'm going to tell you why I'm failing it, because that's not the will of God. I told y'all Sunday, what was my message Sunday? Y'all remember? Wasted purpose. This is not the purpose of God for me to get into this program. That's why I'm so tired tonight. Because I jumped in school ahead of his time. I, mean, I, I don't even know why I wanted to be a nurse. Because first of all, I pass out when I see needles and stuff. <laughs> Ask my grandma. She had a hospital visit. They were drawing blood. Next thing I know, they were taking care of me and forgot about grandma. <laughs> Went straight out. Oh, she think it's funny. Told the church. But there may be happiness, but I don't see joy. I see confusion in your eyes. You are misunderstood. Your, your frustration, and I hope I'm not out of line when I say this, the frustration is because there needs to be a, an example to follow. I'm not talking about mommy. I'm not talking about mommy. But sometimes when parents tell us things, 
it's like we feel like they don't understand what I'm saying. And it's not that. Mama don't want you to have to go through what she had to go through. Well, how am I, how am I supposed to know how to pick the right one? You ain't supposed to pick her. Can I tell you something? You are a beautiful young lady. Stop, stop pulling yourself down for a joker that's not willing to come up the way you had. You hear me? I speak to your mind that God will give you peace. There are times when you just feel like running away. But God give you peace now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this young lady now. God said, if you look at your pastor as a godfather, it will be the example you need. In the name of Jesus. I'm not speaking ill of nobody's parents. But you need a Godfather. You may have one, but I'm talking what he said, a Godfather. The Lord said, use your pastor as your Godfather. And your first lady as your Godmother. And along with your mother, they're going to lead you in the right way. How old are you? 20. It ain't time to marry yet. Are you in school? What are you taking up? Nursing. How many, how much longer you got? Two more years. Where are you going? Eastfield. Don't stop with your bachelor's. I see nurse practitioner. When I was driving here, the Lord said to tell the saints, those that want to go to school, he was going to make provisions to get into school. He said he's going to make provisions. He's going to make provisions to get in school. And you will not stop until you accomplish being a NP. Do you hear me? Any joker that come around, if he can't wait for you, he don't need you. I'm a little bit different in how I present myself, so please excuse me. Because just like I was talking to one of the boys over there, which I know which one it was, and he know which one it was, if you was watching enough, you'd know which one it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't allow. Because let me tell you something. I was preaching, I think Mother's Day. Women are very delicate. And they will stop their life to raise their children. When my baby sister, my only sister, graduated from high school, that's when my mother graduated from college. My mother was 40 what, 243, something like that, when she graduated from college. And her mother gave her the same advice that I'm giving you, to go to school and the rest will come. Now, she's done, doing very well. I mean, look at me. But she didn't listen. She married my father before she even graduated high school. And she was 19 when she was pregnant with me. And uh, I'll be tw uh, 29 this year, she'll be 49. By the time she, I think I came right before her 20th birthday. And it altered her life that she had to make sure that her children were raised. It's not that it's not possible, but it's hard. My auntie back then, she went to school while trying to raise her children and it was hard. She talks about how it, it caused 
you know, just so much trying to raise your children and trying to go to school and, and trying to keep your marriage together and all. And it was hard. So our parents tell us things. I promise you I'm about to go. Our parents tell us things so that we don't go down the same path. Not that we won't be successful, but it'll be harder if you take the same route. Why take a same route if you know that it's not nothing but a dead end? Yeah, then you got detoured and take a whole longer way to get there. Don't allow a young man to steal from you anymore. You hear me? And if he can't come to your level, don't drop down to he is. A man will spend all night trying to hunt a bear. But he ain't going to do it for a cat because they're all over the place. I said that to say this. If you make yourself to be a prize, he'll fight in order to get you. But if you make yourself to be open just like these other garden tools, he'll grab you, take what he wants, and keep going. Yeah, so a man, if I, he'll stay up all night to get a bear. I got that from I got that from Mother Kelly. Yeah, I can't take credit for that phrase, but what I said after the phrase that came from on high. But he'll fight all. He'll stay up all night to hunt for a bear, not no cat, cause they everywhere. Be a bear. I ain't talking about sight. No. I'm talking about value. Be a bear. Make him fight for you. But ain't time to think about them anyway. All right? Finish that nursing. Then I might consider allowing you to court. Like I'm her father. Yeah, that's right. Then we may consider to let you court while you're a nurse practitioner. But finish it first. God, give it right to her now. Protect her future and protect her past. In the name of Jesus, I give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I think one more person wanted prayer. Okay. Okay. In the name of Jesus. Listen. They just did or they have to. Want to. Can I tell you something? The prophecy of concern in the heart is for you. Swelling in your legs denotes some cardiovascular issues. But you're going to be all right, okay? You're going to be all right. 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 Yeah. You're going to be all right. Can I say it again? You're going to be all right. Now, I, I know it may be something with the legs, but that swelling, no, no, no. It's beyond just the knee. I see something cardiovascular related. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare healing to her whole body. In the name of Jesus. And Father, if they must do surgery, you guide the doctor's hands. In the name of Jesus. But God, we can pray right now that you even heal it and they don't have to. I command the swelling to go down. Lord, when she wake up in the morning, let her already see a change. Release the fluid now. You said to speak those things that are not as though they are. Anything that we pray in your name, it's going to come to pass. And it is in Jesus' name. Now clap your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, open your mouth and thank him. I'm all over my time. All right, all right. I trust I've helped somebody. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Patrick. I know what you told me in Dollar General. And the Lord said no. Don't 
couldn't do it. He wants you to stay around. But what your grandmother has spoke to you about, whether you want it or not, because I didn't, I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I still don't want it. And she still keeps saying it. She done messed around and got me preaching every month now. Thank you, Pastor. But not only for that, but for your marriage. See, the enemy wants to pull you away that you're not easily accessible. It's, it's one thing to watch people afar off, but when you can easily grab them, is a whole different story. He said, don't do it. I'll even go as far as to say that your wife not quite, won't quite with it either herself. Just a little bit, not quite. She might have smiled with you, but you know, it was a little bit of okay, because she wants to be submissive to her husband. And if Big Daddy said we got to go, then we got to go. But the Lord said, no. Your grandmother needs you. I know it's heavy and it's a lot and it gets to be tiresome. But she needs you. If you want to leave within the matter of three to six months, your grandmother would leave this earth. Your presence gives her strength to keep going. And you've got to be here to, that she can constantly impart. Because the same thing you said, I said, you know, our pastors, they put up with a lot, and we'd be like, I'm not dealing with half of that. And then they tell you, you ain't ready yet. Keep, keep living. You ain't ready yet. Don't move. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, where you at. You want to go to a different city in Georgia? That's one thing. But North Carolina, no. God said no. And maybe your wife may say, you know, we ain't listening to COVID. Maybe if that's what you want to do, let's go. But I'm telling you, it's a trap. It will cause division in your marriage because you'll get up there and the enemy will begin to make you all struggle and struggling causes tension in marriages it does, it does. stay I know it's chaotic all around job taking care of grandma doing this just get married, trying to, you know, enjoy the marriage, but I got to run here and I'm getting off of work and taking grandma and doing this and doing that and do But I speak strength. Grab your wife's hand. I speak strength. See, if the truth be told, our wives are the ones that are sure we are strengthened. I was waiting to see who was going to ask the saints to pray for me this week. And guess who it was? My wife. She put in the message board, the youth department message board, she said, let's keep Apostle Jones in prayer. He's been going to work and this and this and this and this. I was so tired. I said, well, God, I thank you that somebody heard me. I know, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I knew you was praying, Pastor. <laughs> now, I know my grandma always praying for me. But it's good when you see your spouse stand up and say, pray for my man. God going to strengthen you. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. And don't get in that car. And go up 95 or 85 or whatever five you're trying to go up. Hold on. Okay? Hold on. Point your hand and say, God strengthen him. In Jesus' name.
And God bless their union. Bring some babies in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, you know, it ain't got to be, it ain't got to be next year. I'm, I'm just saying, we've got to bring some righteous seeds in this world. It's a lot of wicked seeds around here. All right, I'm, I'm gone now for real. Would you clap your hands? I am so over my time, and I am so sorry, you know, but I, I'm sorry, but Apostle Jones isn't. You know, I had to do what he said do, so I'm going to go. I feel that he's lifted, so I can go now. Praise the Lord. I can be content in going home to know that I've done the will of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. I feel like pressing my Praise the Lord. <laughs> I didn't mean to ask, is there anybody that's not saved that wants to give their life to the Lord? Anybody that doesn't have the Lord and know him as your personal Savior? We're going to dismiss. If the Lord were to call for you tonight, would you make it into the gates? Every eye going to see him, my grandma tell us. But every eye, everybody ain't going back with him. So if you don't know, hell has an entrance, but it doesn't have an exit. So if there's anybody here that doesn't know him, you can come now. Thank God for the musicians. Brother Jawan, our minister of music, Brother Brandon, Elder Sapp. Hey Amen. My brother came straight from work. He's a master barber, y'all. the master barber 
and we're going to work on getting him a barber shop in Effingham. Yeah, we're going to get him we're going to get him a barber shop. Praise the Lord. Stand, stand. We're going to let you go. Love all of you. Thank you so much, Granny. And yeah, I'm always honored with my grandma come out. Amen. So I think she might come with me tomorrow night. We're going to see. And I think some of the saints going to come tomorrow night, too. They ain't been all week, so I know they might try to come tomorrow night with me. Not, and, and some of them been off all week, teachers. <laughs> Lift your hands to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you for what you've done. Thank you for the move of God. Thank you what our hearts have felt, our ears have heard, and our spirits have experienced. Lord, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you go before us. Lord, if there's anything that we left in our homes in a wreck, Lord, make it right before we get there. In the name of Jesus, touch the sick and the shut-in all across this nation, especially those that are connected to us. And God, when we come back together again, let your glory fall even greater. Lord, touch the woman servant that will come on tomorrow night. Use her for your glory. And we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray. In Jesus' name, amen.